Welcome back to California Cooking. We've got a great show lined up for you today, starting with a new shawarma joint that started with a cult following on social media and now has a line out the door. Then I'm making a crispy chicken schnitzel with a smoky tahini sauce. Plus, nothing beats a juicy sweet nectarine, so Levi and I are making a nectarine tart. There is a new shawarma spot in my neighborhood that everybody's talking about. I had to go check it out and I brought along my shawarma obsessed hubby. Very good, very it's, good. It's nice to meet you. I don't want to say that this is selfish because I happen to live in the neighborhood and was so excited when I saw a shawarma place was coming to the neighborhood. Welcome. Thank you, yes. I appreciate it. This is your first brick and mortar. This is your first spot. Indeed. Uh, I've been doing pop-ups for about four years now. Yeah. All over town. Um, I used to do like once, twice a month. Yeah. And yes, I was shooting, hoping, uh -huh. trying, you know, to get to a place like this. Yeah. Now that we have, we're here to stay. Here you are yeah. in Studio City. I read that you, you were a kitchen cabinet guy okay. who became a guy who started cooking meat in okay. the backyard. How did that wow. happen? When I got here to the state, I started the uh, construction. Yeah. I had uh, the kitchen cabinets company for about 15, almost 16 years. Okay. And this was a lot of stress. I lost all my hairs, oh my you God. know, <laughs> and for passion, you know, for fun. Yeah. During the weekends, I used to grill for home, for friends, sure. for just to have fun. And one thing led to another, and my backyard had another toy, and another toy, and yeah. another toy, and another steak, and another experience, and a smoker. And I really liked it, you know, I fell in love with it. And it was more gratifying than kitchen cabinets for you? Yes, yes. Around 2019, there was this little crisis as, as far as construction that, you know, led me to close the business and really sit home and think what I want to do when I grow up. And this is it. What is different then about having your own restaurant where you come in every day, you unlock the door, you've got your staff versus these pop-ups? Is it a totally different feeling for you? Completely different. Uh, the fact that we don't need to load the truck and unload the truck True. after every event is a big, big It's plus, all here. Right? Yeah. Here, I feel like we're really building something, you know, and we can have a system going. When we came in, we expected a certain kind of volume. I had a crew ready. After the third day, I understand it's not realistic. We need to pretty much double everything. Wow. So, Does that yeah. feel good? Or can yeah, you never amazing. really relax in this business? No, there's relax on the oh, hat. Your hat's yeah. relaxed. You're right. <laughs> there's relax on the hat. There's relax on the shirt. I didn't a, even realize it was like a, subliminal that yes, I said that. Yes, as a reminder for us that we have to relax. Yeah. This has to be fun. Uh, guys at the back have to be happy. That's what I believe in. To talk about you, Avi, tell us you're, you're from Israel. You I'm moved from Israel, to Lowy, the Lowy. U.S. in 03. Yes. I went to school for like uh, design. What yeah. made you move to the U.S.? Uh, I came with a friend actually, really? for school, yeah. We were thinking we're gonna have a degree and keep on going to uh, like Brazil, just Argentina. Visit. Just visit, yeah. And he went back home, I stayed. You did? Yes. And what made you stay? I don't know, it just felt right, yeah. you know? Everything was smooth, everything was going right, everything I wanted happened, everything I tried worked. worked. So okay. Why go? <laughs> uh, why go? Talk about what shawarma means to your culture, to you. Let's compare LA to Israel. Okay. Like every corner of the street you go here, you have like a burger spot, right? Like kids grow up eating burgers yeah. no matter what. Yeah. In Israel, it's pretty much the same. Where I grew up, every corner of the street, there's a shawarma spot. Of course, each one has his favorite. Yeah. This guy like in and out this guy like uh, something Everyone's else. got their twist, their thing. Exactly. Okay. When I got here, one of the things I missed most is food. And we're trying, you know, as uh, a foreigner, we're trying to feel back home, you know, and yeah. try to create the same things we uh, got used to. Who does that, right? Food makes you feel food comfort, and music, whatever. Yeah. yeah, same thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I brought my husband here today <laughs> because. <laughs> I, he took me to Israel for my first time in 2015. He used to spend every summer there. His dad's Israeli. And I remember when we went on the trip, I've never seen my husband as excited as when he went to get his yeah, yeah. Like it was like a kid, like you yeah, said. Yeah. It brought him back to There's be- There's something in there, something. you know, we can't put our finger on, yeah. but it's, it's hitting spots for 
Israelis that miss home and they come, they have a bite and you see their eyes open for Americans that never had it before and right now try it. They, they, it's hard for them to understand it. And I would say, you know, pretty much for everyone. The magic of shawarma. For people who've never had it, explain what it is. The idea is basically take meat, uh, slice it into thin layers, and then stack it on a spit and let it cook uh, rotisserie style. It's vertical and not horizontal, which makes the fat basically drip over it and kind of base it throughout the whole cook. So it almost what? marinates itself exactly. because of because it's upright. Exactly. I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm kind of cheating. Yeah. I'm taking like the almost the highest grade meat, very tender, very tasty, um, best of the best, and I'm using it for this uh, application. I'm using less seasoning because I want to try to you know taste the meat. Now I was um, reading that you use wagyu. At some right. Point. Is that what you're using yes, here? Yes. Yes. 100 percent wagyu. Okay, I remember when I went and ordered my shawarma for the first time. There's the guys there, and they're like, "What do you?" And it was so, it was so crazy. Like it was so busy. It was chaotic. There were lots of people, so I and I didn't know what to do because I'd never done it. And there's lots of toppings and right. things. So in Israel, the common thing which I don't like, okay. um, you have like a big salad bar. Yeah. The customer comes in, and then the guy, like you said, asking, "What do you want to have?" Like Subway. Right. So I limited the options to basically tomato, onion and parsley, okay. which I think goes right with this food. And those are the options. Sauces we have right here. Yeah. Uh, this is a tahini, it's sesame based, yeah. very healthy, very tasty. And this is amba, it's a fermented mango, also yeah. very good. Ari, are you ready? <laughs> He's like drooling. He's right, we're ready. We already ate the fries. They were so. The fries were. These fries remind me of like when you go to the fair so and they good. make them fresh right there. So good. Have you had that before? Wow. So juicy oh and delicious. Oh my god. I've never had that in my life. Mm. And that could be one of the best things. This is the Araya ground meat, mm. heat up. And then the pita's crunchy. This is one of the best bites I've ever had. My life. Mm. Sweaty. All right. Are you ready for the next course? Oh, it's Equal? heavy. Very heavy. <laughs> wow. That is insane. The pita, the pita. Is soft and pillowy. The meat, it has the little crispy bits, the flavor, the spices. And then, honestly, yeah, this mango this sauce mango is amazing. Mango tahini. I'm not really, the combo is really good. What does this make you feel? He can't stop to talk. You know, it reminds me of Israel, but it's not, it's different. This is very yeah. different. But not in a bad way. Come in for the shawarma, but I also think what I love for Avi is look at all these people, like, excited to try his food. He's got two new fans. Wow. Coming up, I'm trying out a new recipe. It's a chicken schnitzel on a Mediterranean salad with a smoky tahini sauce. Then, how about a nectarine tart for dessert? The idea of a plain chicken breast doesn't get me excited for dinner, but a thin, crispy breaded chicken breast with a smoky tahini sauce, that does. Take a look. Levi, have you heard of chicken schnitzel? No. It's a funny word, but I like it. Are you gonna help me? Yeah. The first thing, we've got our chicken breasts right here. And the way you get it nice and thin is you take your chicken breast and you've gotta cut it basically in half. So we've got our piece of chicken here. I've got two pieces of parchment. Now, can I smash it with a hammer? Yes, so you have a job. Not with a fork, that ain't gonna cut it a rolling pin, and Why just let her rip. So you want it to be even though? Right, so I'm gonna break the change. island. You almost want it so thin you can see through it. We're gonna break the egg. Our chicken cutlets are nice and thin. And now, and now we're gonna crack the egg and then we're the gonna egg. put some of this on top. So here's your job, crack two eggs please. 
So we have our station set up. You've got the flour, Where? the egg, and the breadcrumbs. Very nice. No shells. No shells. Will you whisk that for me? We're gonna season our chicken. You wanna season basically every step of the way. So I've got some salt. Then we've got some garlic powder. And then smoked paprika. And then to our egg, same thing. Some salt, so whisk in the salt. On the third plate, we've got some panko breadcrumbs. And to our panko breadcrumbs, sesame seeds. A lot of sesame seeds. First thing, first step, flour. So we basically coat all of the pieces. Now, our egg. Now put it on the breadcrumbs. And then to our breadcrumb and our sesame seeds. Yum. I love how you do that. You do? So to go with our chicken schnitzel, which I have in the fridge, just chilling after I breaded them, helps them maybe set up a little before you fry them. I'm gonna do kind of a quick little salad and then put the fried chicken on top, which I think will be nice. So I've got some cucumbers, because they're small. I'm just gonna do circles, some tomatoes. I've got some beautiful heirloom tomatoes. I think just different sizes, shapes, colors. Got all different colors of tomatoes. I'm gonna just have the cherry tomatoes. Now we've got our beautiful, bigger heirloom tomatoes. So I think for these, I might just wedge a little bit of red onion, thinly sliced, because red onion's strong. I'm also gonna do some thin slices of fennel. I think I'm gonna do the mandolin with the fennel. It slices things really thin. I like the fennel to be thin. I think just one bulb, one bulb of fennel. I just had a thought that I think some capers. Maybe a tablespoon or so of capers. Now, just for the easy dressing, we've got some good olive oil, a lot of it, and lemon. To give it a little California twist, I have an avocado right here. And some parsley. A rough chop, not too fine. Beautiful, look at how much color is in the salad, I love it. And now this I would never put in the fridge because of the tomatoes. I think the fridge just kills tomatoes, although if you have leftovers, put it in the fridge. But before you serve it, just let those tomatoes be at room temperature. You got salt. I might do a clove of garlic. Needs a little, a little something. Not too much because the garlic's raw. I don't want it to overpower, but a little garlic I think would be nice. All right, so our salad is done. Now this is gonna go either on top of your chicken schnitzel or underneath. The other little thing I gotta do, I'm gonna make a sauce. I love tahini, and tahini is just ground sesame to where it makes this lovely kind of creamy paste. I'm gonna doctor it up a little bit. So I'm gonna pour it into a bowl, I wanna add lemon juice because it needs to be flavored. So right now, it doesn't taste like anything. It's just sesame seeds, plain. Salt, it needs a definite pinch of salt in there. Smoked paprika. I'm gonna make kind of a smoky paprika tahini. A Little bit of garlic powder. And I'll probably need to add some water to thin it out as well. All right, time now to fry up our schnitzel. Okay, tell us, what are we doing? We're heating up the pan. And what do I have in here? Oil. What kind? Avocado oil. Yes, very good. So avocado oil, as opposed to olive oil, is much better at a high heat and frying and that sort of thing. So I've got two pans going. You ready? Yeah. Very gently. Beautiful. Now we wait a second before we add another one because you bring the temperature down with that cold piece of chicken. So let's give it a second. Okay, very gentle. No. I know. Gentle. Yes, excellent. Let's do this big one back here all by himself. Yeah. He well, look at going. that. Levi, you ready? These look so good. You've already been tasting. I can yeah. tell. What do you think? They're so good. I really want this. Okay, so what I would do is I would just put our salad with the tomatoes, the fennel, the capers, 
avocado. Wait, there are in there? Red onion. Parsley. Garlic. Olive oil. And lemon. I think I got everything. And that's the beautiful fresh bed for our schnitzel. Because here's the thing, if you put the salad on top, then that crispy breading would just become soggy. So I would just bring it to the table, look at that. Like that, put those around, give yourself a squeeze of lemon. When you put it on your plate, some of this creamy, smoky paprika, garlic, tahini. Just a little side sauce dressing. Dinner is served. Thanks for your help. Coming up, Levi and I are making a tasty nectarine tart, and it only requires just a few ingredients. That's coming up next. Here's an easy dessert to whip up, and the best part, you can use any fruit that's in season. Take a look. Levi's in the kitchen. Hi, Levi. Hi. What are we making today? Do you know? I don't know. Here's a hint. Maybe it's pie. Maybe or it's maybe pie. it's this. This is going to be our cheat Hopefully for today. This. Because while it actually is pretty easy to make homemade pie dough yeah. Can they open it? in the food processor, we're going to do a little bit of a cheat with our refrigerated pie dough. And I thought it'd be fun because it's summertime nectarines or peaches are in season, so I have a whole bunch. These are my my favorite fruit. So I thought it'd be fun to make like an open-faced tart, a rustic tart. The first thing. I think we're gonna make pizza. I think we should do. Flour your board a little, okay? Why? Just so it doesn't stick. I've got my cookie sheet ready to go, because you want to just be able to slide this over. This is so easy. The oven's heating it. up. Look at that perfect circle. Well done. Okay, on a cookie sheet, while that sits and waits for us, let's cut up some nectarines. And I say go for the sweet and juicy, and you could go white, like this is a white nectarine. You could do plums, you could do peaches. You could do apples. So I'm just gonna slice them. So you wanna cut around the pit. And do you know what I bought to go on top of this warm tart when it comes out of the oven? What? Vanilla ice cream. I'm gonna go for the ripest ones first. And even if they're not ripe, I mean, they are gonna cook in the oven, so I think they'll cook down and get juicy and lovely. I'm gonna eat that all. <laughs> do you wanna cut some nectarine? Yeah. Okay. And the best way is, see how it rolls? Try to find a spot that's a little more. But this is mushy. Stir yeah, mushy's good. Just cut around the pit. I don't know how to do that. You're doing great. What I like about this is it, you don't have to be as fussy because it's not an actual pie and it can look rustic because that's the whole point. Why, why is it not an actual pie? Because pies usually have a bottom and a top and you have to put it in the pie dish and make the fancy edges. This is very simple. Is this good? Yeah, just so now these pieces you have, Levi just cut into slices Why like do we have this. to cut it into slices? Because they're gonna go in the pie for the tart and you want them to all be somewhat uniform. So everything cooks at around the same time. Nectarines in the bowl. Can you crack this egg and whisk it up for me? Here's our beautiful bowl of nectarines. What I love about homemade desserts is you can watch how much sugar you put in stuff, which is really nice. So I put two tablespoons of brown sugar and a nice big fat splash of vanilla. Just a sprinkling of flour, maybe a tablespoon or so, because- So it doesn't taste that sweet. Well, these are going to release juice when they're cooking, and then we want that flour to kind of thicken up the juice. Because oddly enough, salt makes things taste sweeter. A sprinkle of salt. Would you like to add these to yours? Should we make these together? Levi, this is your tart. Okay, so- so now what okay. do we do? Here, do you want to dump? Yeah. So look, Levi. Thank you. This is why it's a tart. This is all you do. You just bring up the edge, like a little cute pocket, and that's it. Look at our tart, how cute. 
I don't now, know how. So all I did is flatten this out just a little bit, okay? And you were doing it. Just bring it around like that, that's all. And it hugs it. But now what do we do? Right, what about so, what do we do with the egg? That's a good question. So see this crust? Okay. We take that and you just paint the crust. Not the nectarines, okay? And then look, more sugar. This is turbinado. So it's the sugar that gives you that crunch. Sprinkle this sugar on your crust. Okay, Levi, so you don't we're have done. Food. You ready to put it in the oven? And then when this comes out nice and warm, we'll serve it with some vanilla ice cream. Okay, Levi, not that this was a competition, but you win. Look at yours. And look at mommy's. Mine. It's because you put it at the top. Yeah, so I put mine on the top rack and I put yours on the bottom rack and yours came out perfect. Mine got a little too hot on the top part of the oven, so note to self, but forget that. We have to cut into yours. I'll give you the first piece. What do you think? But it's hot. I know, but you gotta eat it hot because you want the ice cream to melt. Look at that! <laughs> okay, so you got a little of this there. Okay, I'm gonna... Mmm. What is good? That is good, and you know what? It is not too sweet at all. That is deliciousness. For all the recipes we featured in today's show, you can follow us on Instagram at KTLA California Cooking. That does it for us. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you guys next time. Okay. It smells so good. Yes. Some capers would be nice in our salad. Little. My spoon doesn't fit into my caper jar. Let's. It tastes exactly like a pressure finger. I don't. <laughs>